All right. All right, and we are recording. Okay, so just remember to um, on towards the end, keeping it inside that box, but also keeping it a gradual crescendo to where we can leak out of the box. You don't want to take the top off, especially at that very end. It's really easy to when you're crescendoing to just nail it home with a good thing, but in the context of the scene, we got to keep it in that tight box. So, um, yeah, just make sure you do that. Everything else, if you did it the same that we did it 15 minutes ago, then I will be super happy. All right. So go ahead and take a sec, and then whenever you're ready. I was working as an outfitter out of Pinedale. There was a big snow and uh, found myself with the night off. So got a motel and told my wife to come up. Just her. You get precious little romance with two kids and a job that keeps you in the mountains half the year. Emily was 16. Casey was five. You could trust her. She was a good girl. Lived out on the res, not far from her parents. Should have just made him stay with Wilma's folks. I guess where I got out the hair out of town and some school friends came over. Then more came over. And some people who weren't her friends came over. Get together turned into quite the party. And then I don't know. I don't want to know. It was Natalie that called us the next day, told us Emily was missing. They were best friends, and Natalie was worried. She had a right to be. Try to be so careful. Try to plan for everything. Emily was such a good girl. We just let our guard down. Call up kids someday. And let me tell you, Jane, you can't blink for 18 years. Not once. Some guy was moving his sheep near Wind River. He's the one that found her. 20 something miles from our house. How she got there? What happened? I don't know. Couldn't find out much from the autopsy because the coyotes have been at her pretty good. And I've been killing those sons of bitches ever since. Awesome. That was good. That was great. You incorporated so much of the stuff that we talked about. Um, if we could do it again, but for, well, first of all, how did that feel for you? I thought it went pretty good. Um, I'm sure there are some things I could change because I, I, I don't think it was perfect, but I don't know if I'll ever get anything perfect yeah. um, with what I do. So yeah, please let me know. I thought, I thought it was very well done, super well done. You did pretty much almost everything that we went over. Um, just a few things. One, um, ori the original feel that we were getting for the beginning where it was the telling the story after the three years, I got the sense that you were telling it to me as if it's a story you've told before, but not a story that you've been telling for three years, like three whole years. That's, it's not a long time when you say that. It doesn't sound like a long time, but you know, that's a baby. That's a baby's mm -hmm. life right there. So it, it's, it, it seemed very casual, but not in a sense that you were telling it to like a therapist or someone who is actually listening to your emotions. Does that make sense? Yeah. So a little too like, oh, I was working as an outfitter and blah, blah, blah. Oh, that was awful. A thing. bit. Yeah. It was a, it was a bit okay. too, too like that. I definitely liked it. I liked it like that because it made the mood change a little stronger when you started getting into the more, you know, like heavy stuff we were talking about her leaving and the friends coming over and stuff yeah, like that. It, uh, it definitely helped the transition, but it, it wasn't what it was before. 
yeah, it, it was like a little too not, a little too, for lack of a better word, happy, even though it wasn't yeah. happy. Yeah, no, totally. Agree. Okay, I gotcha. Um, one thing you did super well, or uh, I mean, you did many things super well, but one specific thing you did super well was the, and I've been killing those sons of bitches ever since. It was just enough of the leap where you didn't break the top off. That was good. So, watch it down. Um, something else. There was something else. And I should have marked it, but I was like, oh, I'll remember. Uh, son of a bitch. Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. With the friends. Well, like the friends coming over and those damn kids coming over. I know that you have the sense in it because we we talked about it and you you even yeah. expressed first that you have it, but I wasn't I wasn't feeling that like ah these damn kids like they're the reason it's it, it, like it's got to yeah. be one of these kids that took my daughter or it's got you know I I wasn't getting that it was more it was more like I said in that same vein of talking to the like the therapist part mm -hmm. so I, it be you know a little more of that frustration that we were talking about before. Um, oh, yes, I know, and I don't really like to do it either, but give physical attribute comments, but I really liked it when you kept doing the, uh, a lot I don't know, and you went like this. You did it a little bit, um, but it, it really helps sink the mood in when you, when you look down and you went like that. It, it really helped it the past few times that we did when we were doing it in the rehearsal. So I, if it's gonna, if it's gonna throw you off, cause I like the way you delivered a lot. Your actual voice and your tone and everything was good, the emotion. It's just that one slight, the eyes thing. And I think yeah. it's just for me, I'm very big on eyes, emotion in the eyes. That's, and uh, whenever I write or do anything, it's, it's very eye central because that's where that's where all the emotion is. That's where you get it. And they can change your eyebrows. You can smile. You can frown. But if you really want to tell the audience like how you're feeling, you do it through your eyes. Because especially right now with where you are, there is no movement or anything except for your head and your eyebrows and your eyes. So if your eyes go back and forth, immediately the audience knows he's gonna see like yeah he's he's gonna see it. It's gonna be a quick motion. So like I said, if it's gonna completely tamper with the vibe and everything. You can't something that's going to distract you go ahead and leave it out but if you can put it in there that would it would be that you know nice cherry on top for that transition between the uh uh party then i don't know and there's a lot of the one so all right so i i will definitely try to do it um i'll be honest when you said like oh i loved what you did there i'm like what did i even do there i don't even know and then i guess <laughs> i'm like i guess i keep doing it yeah um, you did it so a few times I, yeah, I, I won't be surprised if I do or don't do it, but yeah, like I, I'll try to think about it, but like I, what I was doing, I just wasn't thinking about it. So see, that's the thing is, it's, I don't, I don't want it to be like a forceful thing because then yeah. when you do it, it's going to be like, it's not even going to flow at all. So if it's really something that like, it's not, it doesn't feel natural when you're coming up to it, leave it out. That's, that's not, it's not important. I just, for me personally, I really like that. So um, okay, so taking those notes into consideration, did you have any questions, refreshers that you need uh, from the notes that I gave? Uh, no, just for the most part, when I start, don't be so, for lack of a better word, happy. Like, <laughs> happy, start yeah. at a place that's like, it, well, you know, this is a sad story. Um, kind of attached. I don't know, like, if you ever, I kind of think of it as like the, therapy thing first but also sometimes when I read a book I like I get so distracted and I'll like read the whole page and get to the bottom and then go what did I just read like I was reading every single page so I kind of think of it like that like I'm saying the words but I'm not even really thinking about it not even really processing it until I hit a certain point that's I love that and I and I love how you just said at the end until I hit a certain point because that's where you can you know like I was saying before you can use those key words yeah to really flip flop that emotion around. So you nailed it on the head right there. That's good. That's it. All right. Um, so yeah, I think, I think what I'm going to do just cause it, the beginning, you just starting out, it felt a little awkward. So I think I'm just going to say, I don't, I do, but I won't. And then you go into the one. Um, 
that's literally just the line she says okay. right before. Just so that we kind of have a, a transition going in. All right. Okay. So, take a sec. And then, and then I'll say action. And then I'll say the line and then you go. All right. Action. I do, but I but I won't. I was working as an outfitter out of Pinedale. There was a big snow and found myself with the night off. So I got a motel and told my wife to come up. Just her. You get precious little romance with two kids and a child that keeps you in the mountains half the year. Emily was 16. Casey was five. You could trust her. She was a good girl. Lived out on the res, not far from her parents. She just made him stay with Wilma's folks. I guess word got out. We were out of town and some school friends came over. Then more came over. Then some people came that weren't her friends. To get together turned into quite the party. Then I don't know. But I don't want to know. It was Natalie that called us the next day. Told us Emily was missing. They were best friends. Natalie was worried. She had a right to be. Try to be so careful. Try to plan for everything. Who was such a good girl. It just let our guard down. You'll have kids someday. And let me tell you, Jane, you can't blink for 18 years. Not once. Some guy was moving his sheep near Wind River. He's the one that found her. Honey, something miles from our house. How she got there? What happened? I don't know. Couldn't find out much from the autopsy because the coyotes been at her pretty good. And I've been killing those sons of bitches ever since. Sweet. That was really good. Seriously. They, that you pretty much incorporated all those emotions and even, especially in that we were talking about the, uh, some guy was moving his sheep near the Wind River. I think you nailed that personally, or at least from what we were talking about, like all the emotions you're trying to relay. And it's, and it's, it's the slight pauses. And that's why I, when I, as, as like a writer or director, I like to put in those, those pauses, but it always works out so better when the, when the actor does it so naturally. And you, and you did it naturally. The, uh, I, I don't have any specific example, but there were certain parts where you, if there was a small comma or even if there wasn't a break, you would take a break and take that second to, you know, make sure that your character, it has, get, it's getting that mood change. The mood changes you did really well. Um, the only comment, which isn't a specific comment on the script, is that you're, you're very good at understanding, like, the emotion of, the line that we're saying or the whole scene in general i would just and this is just for like a future comment not, not right now because i think what we did right there i think that was it personally um moving forward i think that you just have to find some way more to connect with the the part of your brain that's saying okay relay this emotion to your heart i mean i know that sounds kind of mm -hmm. but Try to find a better connection, whether that be, I know a lot of people, which we did earlier, were talking about um, um, real life situations that we have that portray to heat. Now, for me personally, that works sometimes, but not all the time. I like to kind of role play, and I know that's literally what we're doing, but 
I like to put myself in the situation and pretend that that is my life. And I think that just goes with my imagination. My imagination is pretty wild and active. So I think it's easy for me to input myself into there. Um, but yeah, what, what, what do you think? How do you, what are your thoughts on that? I, I definitely agree. Um, so I, I wasn't able to watch myself really well, but um, just from doing this class and what I've seen, like every single time, like I think I'm like nailing the emotions I go back and watch, I'm like, this is awful. Yeah, my it, doing. Okay, not awful. I didn't mean to agree with you. Um, I thought you were oh, gonna say I'll something else. I'll criticize myself more than anyone. <laughs> and like, please, you can use whatever language you want to describe me. Be as harsh as you want. I okay. will not um, be broken up about it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so like, I definitely agree with you. So I I didn't see what you just saw, but uh, yeah, just overall from what I've seen for myself, I think it's definitely a good note um i i can see you really trying to relay that emotion but then when you what let me let me think of see specific one when you really get into the emotion of like that center part with with the um uh, there's a lot i didn't know i wish i didn't know that part right there i can i can see you trying to push it out but by trying to push it out you're going kind of above so and, and I'm not an acting coach or professional director by any means, but it, it seems to me that you need to find some way to naturally flow into the emotion. Yeah. Cause like, like I said, it seems like you're trying to like, you got like the emotion, push that out, like, force yourself to have yes. that emotion. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's gotta be more of a uh, natural flow. How you do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but <laughs> I'm sure your teacher can, can tell you what happened. Yeah, that's just from what I observed. Because your facial expressions are, for the most part, pretty good. Your your face definitely matches what it is you're trying to relay. It's just like I said, when especially when you're talking. I feel like you got the face more down than the actual like, tone. I don't know how else to describe it. Like the tone in your voice. You seem to do a lot of, um, especially when you're getting into the more like, puffy face sad stuff like that stuff you seem to use a lot of like airy kind of breathing. and i think that's a natural tendency for when you're feeling sad or when you're trying to talk like seductively i feel like airy talk is kind of because you you're trying to find the words or i don't know exactly why but if you could i'm not saying for this because like i said the last one i did today was really good but when you're trying to relay something that's sad or disheartening or forlorn or discouraging try to stay away from using that kind of airy voice because i think that that when we were talking about monotone before i think that's what i was talking about was that you and i don't i'm trying to think of a different word to say besides airy you know what i'm talking about when i say airy yeah i think so okay um yeah, i'm trying to think of a different word but i can't kind of uh, i'm not sure but um, yeah, it, it seems like you kind of have like a default, which is good because if all else fails, result back to that default and it'll be okay. But um, I guess just opening up your like acting emotions or something like that, I don't know. But yeah, how do you, how do you feel about that last time? I don't think I, uh, I don't know if I asked you yet, sorry. I think overall I felt um, pretty good. Like honestly, when I was doing it, the one thing I was like, "Ooh, I don't know if I'm hitting this correctly," was when I said some guy was moving his sheep. But then you're like, "Oh, that came across so well." I'm like, "Oh, great, okay." <laughs> um, I think I think it came across really well because it was paired with the be the part before that. It seems, or to me at least, it seems like everything really filters off the last part that you read because you have to change, like like we were talking about, change the emotion and regardless if it's exactly what I or you wanted you to say, you change that emotion enough to where I can go, okay, I'm comfortable with that. Whatever it was before, even if it wasn't exactly, you know, going back to that airy kind of monotone thing, even if it was that and you change the emotion, I'm fine with that. Um, but that's why it was so good. <laughs> All right. Um, sweet. I mean, if you're comfortable with that, I'm, I'm comfortable with the one we just did. I, I'm good with that. I, uh, if you want me to do it again, then I'm cool to do that. Otherwise, yeah, I'm good. I think it's good. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want right. to do it again and then and then and 
and then you change something and maybe like, oh, that was really good. So now let's combine that because I could totally see myself, you know, you doing something slightly different and then you being like, okay, let's do it a third time, but like combine those two things with that thing. So I think that last one was very good. So we'll, we'll leave it at that. All right, cool. Sweet. Awesome. This has been very good. I've, I've enjoyed working with you. I'm glad Thanks. that my first time experience working with a actual actor was a good one. Cause if I'm being honest, I was actually very nervous. Well, yeah. And so I really didn't know what to expect. I wasn't really uh, nervous about it, but then just when our class was meeting beforehand, somebody said that um, they were, I guess, or no, our professor said, Oh no, there was some director years ago who just had these really, really strange ideas and like, they just came back and um, said like, well, yeah, I did it, but they just wanted me to do all these really weird things and none of it made any sense to me. <laughs> Our professor was like hearing some of them like, that is weird. What, what even was that? But no, I, I really, really liked like all the input you had. So thank you. I appreciate uh, that. Out yeah. of a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have thought about. Thank you. That's, that's, that's kind of harder to say. I, Definitely, when I first went into it, I only had read this, and I definitely had a different feel for what the scene was supposed to be. I thought he was angry at her, and when I was acting it up myself, that's what I was doing. When he would say like um, things about the, uh, I don't know, people came that weren't her friends. I was getting real angry when I was saying that. I was like. And then some people came to one of her friends, kids. like those, yeah, those goddamn kids coming up, ruining everything. But, uh, but then when I saw that they're supposed to be like, kind of, she, he's helping her. And then I saw the steel box thing at the end. I was like, okay, okay, so this could be a little more reserved. They're, they're actual friends, so he's not like pissed at her. But, uh, um, yeah, I really wanted to just stick with what was on the page. I wasn't trying to go like a oh, book or anything. So, yeah, uh, not too experimental, but. Uh, yeah, this has been a great experience. Thank you so much, Jack. Yeah, I thank you. Um, I guess we're done now, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay. And you know if we to do. do we go back to the class? I don't think so, right? I have I'm, no idea. I don't I'm know if I'm supposed to go back. Or